So a big day from DJI, because not only have they given us the Avata 2, they have also given us a new DJI Fly app 1.13.0, but most importantly, and what I'm going to be covering in this video, they have updated the firmware on both of these screen controllers. One feature I've seen is really, really cool. The other feature is, again, quite cool. The third new feature is slightly disturbing, and you might want to watch at the end of this video, because I'm not too sure I'm keen on DJI spying on me. So let's get into it. So first of all, for the DJI RC, which is the original screen controller, we have got added support for the updated FlyShare for the fast file transfer directly from the remote controller to your phone. And we also have added support for independent app updates without the need to update the controller firmware. Now, this is absolutely huge because every single time since DJI launched this, there was no ability to just update the DJI Fly app. And that meant that every single time there was a new DJI Fly app, whilst it was nice and simple to grab it on your mobile phone, just through your app store, for example, or the DJI download page, when it came to the screen controller, we had to wait, essentially, uh, to make sure we had that firmware update, which was sometimes a little bit delayed. This meant that if you had one of these screen controllers, you was sometimes a little bit behind those that were using their mobile phone and the relevant DJI RC M1 or DJI RC N2 controller. Now, as you can see with the DJI RC controller, which is the one I'm using in this video, there has been an update to the user interface that you might not have seen before if you're updating this for the first time. Essentially, now we have got this before you fly section, this quick transfer, and this service function as well. I have covered these in a previous video, so I won't go into the details in this one, but I will leave a link to the last video where you can go check out all of that. Now, on a previous video, I showed you how to use the DJI Quick Transfer feature, which is the act of actually transferring uh, files such as photos or videos directly from your DJI drone onto your mobile phone without the need to turn on any controller. However, this video is going to show you the new version called FlyShare, which basically allows you to transfer files directly from the controller to your mobile phone without turning on your drone. I'm sure it's going to be useful. So let's get straight into it and show you that one. So what we need to do is have the DJI Fly app open on our mobile phone and the DJI Fly app open on our screen controller. What we are then going to do is just click into our album. Okay, and as you can see, this is the photo I have taken today on a brief test flight just to be able to uh, bring you this. Now, as you can see, because I've got the mobile phone open with the DJI Fly app, it has already detected um, that there's another mobile phone or there's another device active with the DJI Fly app open. And it's indicated by this little icon in the top right corner. Now, all I need to do right now is just click that right there. Okay. And as you can see, what we need to do is transfer the screen recordings, cached files and downloads from your remote controller to your phone. So first of all, as you can see, what we need to do is open the DJI Fly app on my phone, which of course I have. Then it tells us to go to the album, which I'm going to do. And then we're going to click this quick transfer button exactly as it tells us to do. Now it's searching for devices or what we can do is scan the QR code. So I'm going to select that option right here. Okay, and as you can see, hopefully that works. There we go. So do you want to join the Android AP3705? Let's click join. And as easy as that, as you can see on your screen, basically that has just sent the file directly to my mobile phone and that is already in my gallery. So now we've seen that feature, I'm going to show you where you find the menu to update your DJI Fly app independently without having to update your full firmware. So once again, we're just going to back out of that and we'll go into profile and settings. So we're looking at this screen right here. Now, normally if there was a DJI Fly app firmware update, you would click check for firmware updates and of course it would prompt you that there was one available however they've hidden this in a slightly weird place so what we need to do now is go to the about section and as you can see there now we've got the option just like we have on the mobile phone to check for dji fly app updates so if i go and click that of course nothing happens because it says the dji fly app is up to date but ultimately that is a really really cool tool and hopefully this will avoid us having to download these massive files onto our screen 
screen controllers. And of course, everything I've just shown you is also applicable to the DJI RC2, which is the controller for, of course, the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3. Now, the next new thing I want to show you is slightly more disturbing, if I'm completely honest with you. At the end of the day, we all want to be able to fly our drones in peace, but there should be a degree of trust. And maybe I'm backing up the wrong tree here, so please do let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, there has to be a degree of trust that people are following the rules and regulations. And whilst this may seem completely innocuous um, and really not that major... Maybe this is just my paranoia. I do not know how you feel. Let me know in the comment section below. But what I'm about to show you just reads a little bit more alarming to me. So let me show you exactly what that is. So as you can see here, we now have this option to flight record authorization. And this allows and authorizes DJI to access and analyze your flight records synced to the DJI server under your DJI account, which will help us identify issues with your DJI device and provide appropriate after sales service. Now this could be completely innocuous and I do fully appreciate that. But at the end of the day, if my DJI drone has got a fault, it's going to tell me. If and when that happens, I will then raise a ticket with DJI service. Absolutely no problem. The idea that DJI are now specifically going to be potentially scanning my flight logs to check for things, I'm not overly keen on, nor do I see why they would want to do it. Normally, I'm quite a positive person and generally feel like, oh, it's no really big deal. What, what harm can it be? But for me, just allowing the manufacturer to go through your records um, and just check for things, for me, I, I just don't feel comfortable with it. But that's just something for you, of course, to be aware of. Now, everything I have just said and showed you is also relevant to the DJI RC2 controller. This is the controller that is, of course, compatible with the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. The only addition on this controller is, as you can see, uh, if I pop that on screen, it now has the ability for the added support to the DJI Goggles 3, which has just launched with the DJI Avata. So there we go, that wraps up the firmware updates for the DJI RC and the RC2 controller. Of course, a bit of a long-winded one, but I wanted to get across everything that I felt and of course show you that new really cool fly share feature. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below to what you've seen in this video. I'm always interested to hear some feedback. Of course, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm more people just like you might want to watch my content. Subscribe if you're awesome and until next time, see you again soon.